So um, you are tallest girl in porn? Yes. Um, well, there's Ava Cox in the UK who is also listed as 6'3". Okay. We have not met each other. Oh. So we got to do get out. Yeah. Do you, um, I mean, do you ever get, like, is there, what are the disadvantages and advantages to that? Um, when I was new, nobody wanted to hire me. <laughs> um, but now it, it gets played on a lot, you mm-hmm. know, and, um, I've seen those pictures of you and Joanna. Mm-hmm. Joanna loves it. Cause Joanna's so short. It's our, <gasps> both of our number one photos on Instagram every year. Yeah. It's insane. Why do you think that is? Like people do love that whole, they love it. like, and, and you see it with other people too, like the tall, short, mm-hmm. like big, small, like, I don't know. I think it's just, um, it gives them more point of reference. You know, like I'm always in heels or she's always with short people or whatever. And then you put us next to each other and it's the shortest and the tallest. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if she's the shortest, but you know. She's not the shortest. I know Madison Ivy shorter than her. Oh my God. For sure. That's such a tiny person. Yeah. I want to meet Madison. She's awesome. Small Um, person, big personality. Yeah. But we like, and we look similar. And so it's like, whoa, like two tattooed girls who look so similar or so different. We share clothes too, as long as it's not like a dress. Mm-hmm. Me and Joanna share clothes. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just think they, I just think they love it. But yeah, when I was new, they tried to hook me up with all the tall guys and none of them are as tall as me. Um, and then they put me with all the short guys and then that got old and now I just get cast, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, when I was new, it had to be a thing mm-hmm. or else they wouldn't cast me they were like you have a lot of tattoos and you're super tall like Mm -hmm. what do we do with you and then I guess maybe my sales were good or something Mm -hmm. because I mean it's I don't know four or five years later and it's not as much you're getting cast just like Mm -hmm. it's because you're a good performer I mostly do gonzo because of it Mm -hmm. mostly because I can't be someone's mom because I look young and have tattoos I can't be someone's sister because I'm a foot taller than them Mm -hmm. um I get put in prison movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, and sometimes it's just, it's still a storyline, but there's no like age or relation mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like, you know. It's also hard, I will say, like from a director's standpoint, it's hard to shoot like something like a feature where there's a lot of like dialogue scenes, like face to face interaction <laughs> with people who are two totally different heights because. Mm-hmm. In mainstream, you know, you get that all the time and, and they'll actually, you know, put people on Apple boxes or they'll take the, cause they have the time. Mm-hmm. Like I remember seeing one scene with Tom Cruise, who's shorter than most people re- realize and somebody else who was significantly taller and like learning about the behind the scenes. And it was, they were walking next mm-hmm. to each other and talking. Um, so obviously you can't put them on a box. They literally dug a trench for the other guy to walk in so that he was like the same height as Tom Cruise. They did that with, I believe, Robert Downey Jr. for um, the Marvel movies. Okay. They like build him a walkway. So when they're walking and they're all like, yeah, like Superman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's on a walkway higher <laughs> than the other guys. Yeah. And you can tell the proportions are slightly off, but they need it as a pretty shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wish we could do that. I, I did a scene with Mick Blue, who I love, and we were a married couple and we were fighting and it <laughs> I'm so much taller than him. And it was like, it was this really intense thing where he's like mad at me. So he's like throwing me around, but I'm like a foot taller than him. And, um, I mean, it was fine. We did it. But I remember the whole day being like for, for a married couple that's like fighting and kind of having like makeup fighting sex, you put me with like the shortest guy you could find, like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but I mean, I date people shorter than me. I, I think it's also important to just put me with whoever and just break the idea that I have to date someone who's six foot seven or something. I don't yeah. Know. Have you find that to be difficult in your personal life? Cause again, you know, we were talking a little bit before the podcast, my, my sister is six feet tall, like mm-hmm. almost six one. And she found it tricky to date in high school because she was so tall. People taller than me freak me out because I'm not used to them. Mm. I get really, really like uncomfortable. I mean, Mm. I get over it, Yeah, but I'm always like, so I'm actually, I think less attracted to people who are significantly taller than me. Um, my boyfriend is like six feet tall and Mm -hmm. it's fine. Um, he feels small to me. He's just like thin and 
shorter mm-hmm. than me, but I don't, I'm not like, Oh, I'm not attracted to you. I'm just like, I'm bigger than you. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's yeah. just a fact. Yeah. Um, I would date someone taller than me, but I think it would take several dates for me to even relax enough to feel like safe. When I hug people that are taller than me, I feel suffocated. I'm not used to having my face right, obstructed. Right, you're used to having like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's usually That's around six feet that I date, but like the person I dated before him is five, seven or eight, and it was never a big deal. He would just say that people were staring at us. Mm-hmm. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I remember when I was on Tinder, where this is actually where I met my husband, but um, guys would always complain when I would like match with them and talk to them that uh, height was a thing. Mm-hmm. Like height was like a big thing for guys to put on their Tinder profile. Mm-hmm. And if they didn't put their height on their Tinder profile, the first thing girls would ask them is what their height was. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes, you know, guys would be like, so are you going to ask me how tall I am? And I was like, well, actually, yes. <laughs> My <laughs> my boyfriend is so strong. Like, I think I just want them to be, like, at least strong or, like, able to keep up with me. Like, yeah. if you're very small and not athletic, um, that's a problem. But, like, he can, like, pick me up with one arm, man. Mm-hmm. I, he can make me feel small if I need to f- feel small. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, if I had to date people taller than me, most dudes that are over 6'3 are um, – they know they're over six three. Mm-hmm. That's a way to put it nicely. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't want to be stuck to just the pool. Who's like, I'm rare and special, and like mm-hmm. just has this. Because then your entire dating is just like this ego of like, you know, he gets to pick and choose who he wants to be with instead of really getting to know someone. And I feel like when I allow any height to exist and they feel the same way, mm-hmm. we actually get to know each other. Yeah, and that's just how I feel as a six foot three person. Right. You know, maybe if I was like five, nine, I'd want someone a little taller than me or something, but I'm so far out of reach that like, I was just like, whoever's nice to me. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, that, that totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so you took a year off working in the industry. Um, why did you leave and what made you decide to come back? Um, I think honestly it was only like six months but it feels like you're in porn. We move so fast. So you took six months off working in the industry. (laughs) It's okay. I think I even call it a year. Um, I did what every good porn girl does. And I met a dude in a band and then he said he didn't like my job. And then I quit for him. Mm. Um, (laughs) I've never heard that story before. (laughs) Joanna and I were talking about it the other day. She's like, every girl does it and then if they come back they have a comeback and then they're good and then they're here yeah (laughs) or they never come back and I was like I came back um so I came back uh it was a nice experiment with my life um I also had a lot of like personal family stuff going on and someone who like cared about me said you know maybe you should stop working and I think I was just going through a lot and it all happened at once um it's not fully his fault I was being sarcastic but I did leave and followed him to Tennessee and went back to doing hair and I started bartending and I just kind of, it was kind of a reflection moment to see if this is really what I wanted Mm -hmm. in all reality. And I was really happy out there and also very miserable. Um, I realized that I really missed porn and all of my friends here and I came back and, um, as much as people would say like I regret it or it was a terrible time or whatever, I think it was really important because every time I do go through something external outside of porn and I start second guessing my feelings or maybe work was hard to go to that day or whatever, I remember that my outside world can affect work, but it doesn't mean I need to quit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it just gave me a way more solid like commitment Mm -hmm. to the job and to know that I left and I didn't like it out there and I came back home. So, um, and now when I date people, like when I met my, my current boyfriend, um, I made it very clear. I mean, he was a fan, which we don't have time to talk about, but, Mm -hmm. uh, he was a fan of mine who snuck in and, uh, he invited me climbing and that's how he won short story. Um, but oh, you're gonna tell that story. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's fine. We have, we have time. Okay. I I made him call me my legal name immediately. I was mm-hmm. like, I am not the porn star that you're obsessed with. I'm a person. You can date me. And then I was like, but also, I am that person, just not for you. Mm-hmm. And I just made a very. I was able to like understand what boundary I needed to set. And he has been more than accommodating. He drives me to work. Like you know, yeah, he's great. So. Um, 
how did that, because this is like every fan's dream, you know what I mean? That like I they could actually have the possibility to date their favorite porn star. And usually like those dreams are crushed. Yeah. I love telling fans when they ask me like, would you ever hook up with a fan? I'm like, I'm dating one. Um, so he was a fan of mine for years. Mm -hmm. And um, he stopped actually messaging me, quick side note, for like a year. And it was while he had a girlfriend because he's a good boy. Mm -hmm. uh, but he messaged me on Instagram and I ignored it and then sent me a meme eventually, like four messages. And they were spread out. He wasn't like, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> um, he sent me a meme that did relate to me and I liked it. And so I wrote back, haha, because I checked my message requests. Please don't send me a bunch of message requests. But I check them. I'm like, that's you not an don't. invitation. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I check mine too and I delete every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I, like, it's so rare that I'll answer one. I don't I even, don't like, why. I'll just, you know what I do? I check to see if, like, a performer mm -hmm. has written to me that's trying to reach me. Yes. Um, and then I delete it. So I, we had, I shouldn't have said that. Some year. I don't check my messages ever. I never look at them. Oh, don't look at them. Yeah. Don't, don't DM me. <laughs> if you want to reach me, go to OnlyFans. I will. I block people actually who message me. So like actually don't because you'll get blocked. But he messaged me a few times in a, in a very like relaxed manner and sent me a funny meme. And honestly, I probably had like a beer and was like, haha, and wrote back. Mm -hmm. He just got me on a day I wrote back. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I restricted him and then he sent me a few other messages and I ignored him. But I didn't block him because we had – we were both from San Diego, and he was followed by some of my friends. Oh, interesting. So I was like, hmm. So I never, like, really fully got rid of him. I was just like, interesting. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Mm -hmm. And um, he messaged me and said, hey, I see that you go rock climbing sometimes. If you ever want to learn – he actually said a butt ton, which I think is cute. If you ever want to learn a butt ton, I'm a guide out in San Diego. Like, let me know next time you're here. Cause he knew that my family was there cause he was a fan of mine. And, um, I wrote back and I was like, I don't really ever go to San Diego and I don't have time to climb, but like keep in touch. And then he moved to Idlewild, which I thought was closer. And I was like, Oh, you're closer. And then I really wanted to climb. I missed climbing. It had been months. I'd been injured back and forth, lost my climbing partner. So mm -hmm. now I'm kind of pursuing it. Cause I'm like, I need a climbing partner. Yeah. And he's a guide and I wasn't strong or good at it at the time. I needed someone who was good. Mm -hmm. Um, so I kind of started bugging him about it and then we were both dating people. So it just wasn't really happening because we were distracted by our other partners. And, um, he totally lied to me and I've called him out on it and it's funny. Uh, he lied to me and said, I'm coming to Las Vegas this weekend. Uh, if you want to go climbing, I'm sure I could make time to take you out. He was He had no plans in Vegas. No. Of course no, not. No, 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 no. Oh my God, it's such a lie. Like, <gasps> if I can carve out some time for you, I'm super busy. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I, he told me when I finally called him out on it because I kept it to myself like all year. I recently asked him about it. And he was like, Yeah, I just wouldn't have come to Vegas if you said no. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a pretty like slick move on his part, to right? be honest. And it makes sense. You know, it's yeah. not like. It's not like a crazy stalker move. It wasn't crazy stalker. It was just like, I'm available in Vegas if you are. And yeah. just kind of made it sound like he was there for a different reason. Yeah. It's like, yeah, sure. And so I wanted to meet him the day before we were going to climb. He drove his trailer out. I met him at a park. And he was sweet and nice. He like brought me a birthday present. Um, my birthday was like a few days before. And uh, we talked and like went and had dinner. And I was like, where are you going to sleep? Because he was in his trailer. And like, I have a van. I get it. Like. Mm -hmm. Tell people to sleep in your driveway. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trusting him with my life tomorrow. Might as well trust him tonight. Yeah. And so, because um, I was going to bring a friend, I was like, I want to meet you so that I don't have to bring a friend. And he was fine. And came back to my house. We hooked up immediately. <laughs> and um, definitely by his doing, I was like, I had no idea what was going on. I was just like, oh, this guy wants to go climbing. Oh, we're making out. Oh, we're having sex. This is great. <laughs> uh, not that he like forced himself on me, but I just didn't have that intention at all. It just happened naturally. It just happened. Yeah. And then we went climbing and then we went climbing the next day and he stayed at my house all weekend. And that's when I figured out he had no other plans. And I never said anything to him for a year. That's funny. And I called him out and he was like, that's cute that you remember that. Yeah, I didn't have any plans. So he tricked me. But it worked. Yeah, no kidding. You guys yeah. been together for over a year now? Wow. Yeah. So see, there is hope. There's all hope. you have to do is just be persistent. 
everyone's going to hate me for saying that. <laughs> be really good at rock climbing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like finding something in common is, yeah. is really important. And the fact that we had mutual friends, we lived in the same neighborhood. We talked a lot before he did show up, which I'm leaving out. Like I ended yeah. up pursuing him because I needed a climbing part as a climbing partner. Um, and just putting together, we knew some of the same people. And I was like, do you care if I bring a friend so you don't kill me in the desert? And he was yeah. like, yeah, you can bring a friend. And was just so accepting of anything I needed to feel mm-hmm. safe and knew the same people. And I like told them I was climbing with him and they're like, Oh, we love him. You know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I think sometimes we forget that like guys who are fans of porn are just guys, Mm -hmm. you know, like they're like normal people a lot of the time. Yeah. And he, it's it's funny. Sometimes he looks at me and he like, gets this little smile. I'm like, what? He's like, I'm dating my favorite porn star. I was like his favorite. (laughs) That's awesome. And I'm like, that's so cute. Okay. Put that out of your mind. Cause that's not so it's cute. It's also kind of creepy, but also cute. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm uncomfortable. But yeah, that's a great story. Thanks. Yeah, I, I've I, I have talked to I think a couple of girls over the years who have dated fans, but it's not common at all. So and it doesn't usually like last. Like he like lives with me. We have a dog. Wow, wow, it's real. You guys I, have a dog together. It's real. It's real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's bringing her to me right now, actually. <laughs> what kind of dog is it? We found her in Utah. Um, she was up for adoption, but mm-hmm. just a mutt, like mutt. a reservation mutt. Yeah. Those are the best. Mm-hmm. Our dogs have always been rescues. Yeah. She's the best. She's, she likes being in the van and she likes going climbing and that's what matters the most Yeah, <laughs> with my life. Yes. 